and welcome to MIC TV. Um, today, we're going to be discussing music revenue streams, the six core ways to profit from music. Um, as always, I am Greg Ferriola, along with my partner, TJ Peterson. Um, now, if this is your first time joining us, I'd like to welcome you to the MIC community. And for everyone watching, even if you're going to be watching um, the replay at some point, drop a line in the chat, say hi, let us know who you are. Um, you know, if, even if it's the replay again, because we will respond to every um, comment and question. So again, today we are going to be discussing music revenue streams, the six core ways to profit from music. Um, and if you're ready, let's dive in. Okay, so as I'm sure you already know, earning money as an artist or band is pretty difficult. Now, if it's your goal to have a full-time music career, um, you're gonna have to overcome the financial challenges that accompany being a musician. Um, and the financial challenges you're gonna face will vary based on your skill as a musician. Simply put, you know, the less that you know about music, the more that you're gonna be spending. Um, so if you don't play an instrument or you're a solo, art, a solo artist, um, you may have the expense of hiring musicians when you're playing a live show or when you're going into the studio. Um, if you and if you don't know how to record music at home, then you're gonna wind up spending a ton of money in on studio time because you're gonna don't know how to do the easy stuff at your apartment or your home. Now, from music lessons to gear to recording equipment, there are a ton of expenses um, that musicians will have to learn how to pay for even before they get to the point where they can handle their day-to-day -day stuff like their rent and their medical bills and food and all that kind of stuff. Um, and with the state of today's music industry, again, earning money isn't the easiest thing in the world to do. So if you want your full-time job um, to be music, at some point you're going to need to learn how to earn money, um, not only to support, again, the cost of your music career, but all your personal expenses. Um, now, this means to be successful, you're going to need to understand the different types of revenue streams um, available to you as an artist. Um, so today, we're again, we're going to discuss the six core ways to profit from music, and then we're going to break down each one and the pros and cons of each. Um, now, before we get into this, uh, the six revenue streams that we've selected um, are simply the most common ones. Um, and the ways that you can earn money as a music really vary. Um, but the things that we're coming today aren't the only ways that you can earn music, money from music. At some point in these shows, we're going to cover a bunch of different ways. Um, but for right now, um, we're going to just share with you these. Um, but we do have a, a different philosophy that we work with when we talk with our musicians, meaning like, you know, the different things that you love, we can find ways to generate money from that. But again, look for that in a future episode. Today, we're just gonna cover the basics. Um, now, when you are, oops, sorry, lost my place. <laughs> All right, so in today's music industry, we believe that being an artist and a band isn't just about selling music anymore. It's about using your music to sell your brand and your experience of your career which makes the overall sales process more effective and enjoyable for you and your audience. Um, but before you can even tackle that again, you need to understand the basics, um, which is what we're gonna do today. So without any further um, ado, we are going to dive into that and I'm going to give the presentation. So here we go. All right. So again, we're gonna be discussing the six main ways musicians earn money and the pros and cons of each. And that's gonna start with music sales. So in today's industry, musicians have the ability to sell music digitally and physically. Now, the formats to sell music digitally include via download, stream, subscription, or through ads generated on a service like YouTube. Um, now, since the birth of digital music has significantly decreased the value of music, it makes it really difficult, if not impossible, to earn a sizable income from sales. Um, Put it plainly, no one lives off record sales anymore. And if they do, it's 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 the exception, not the rule. Um, now, that being said, there are sales techniques musicians can use to increase the value of their music, such as selling their music as pay what you want. Now, pay what you want allows fans to support their favorite artists by paying them above the standard pricing for digital music. Um, website services like Bandzoogle and music discovery services like Bandcamp offer this feature to artists and bands. and um, that user platform, and it's a great way to earn money. Now, you'll hear stories, again, where artists will earn tons of money through streaming platforms like Spotify, um, but again, these artists are the exception, not the rule. Um, depending on the streaming service, just to make you aware, it takes any somewhere between 100,000 to 2 million plays just to earn minimum wage, which isn't impossible, 
Um, but it's not that easy either. So if you're going to be working at that from you know a business standpoint, we always recommend to ours to look for other revenue streams that are a little bit easier to generate income from. Now, when it comes to physical, uh, CDs have rapidly declined over the years. Um, and nowadays it's even hard to find a CD player. But vinyl, on the other hand, can be a great form of income um, and the sales for vinyl remain strong. Now, the downside with vinyl is it takes a long time to produce and it can be very expensive. Um, so before you commit to pressing vinyl, make sure that you speak with your audience, engage their interest. Now, regardless of whether you are selling your music physically or digitally, we do recommend whenever possible to sell your music direct to fan right through your website. Um, again, services like Blanzuga will allow you to keep 100% of your income, which is what you want when building a business. Um, now, the next revenue stream is live shows. Now, live shows can be a great source of income for musician, and it's a great way to build your audience. Um, the two ways that you can perform live include in-person shows and via live stream. Um, now, for in-person, when it comes to putting on shows, the types of shows that you can play include things like club shows, festivals, street performances, college shows, house concerts, um, corporate events, and weekly, weekly gigs at places like restaurants. Um, now, out of the types of shows that you can play as an artist, in our opinion, club shows are kind of the worst. Um, they're, 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 you know, depending on where you're at in your career, they can be good um, and they're a good learning experience. Um, and not every single club show is bad, but most of the time you're going to be supplying the audience, which doesn't help you expand your fan base. Um, also, too, when you play a club, you know, the, the club has overhead expenses, so you're going to be splitting the income for the show with the venue um, or in some instances, even paying them to be able to perform. Um, so just be careful when you're going to go and play those kind of gigs um, and be clear on the benefits and the drawbacks before you agree to do anything. Now, on the flip side, we highly recommend house concerts because you're playing to an audience that someone else supplies. And it's also because of the intimate atmosphere, um, it's more likely that you're going to earn like solid tips and a better income from those kind of shows. Uh, now, I'm not going to go through or break down every single one of the different types of live shows, um, but, you know, there are a lot of different ways to earn, you know, a solid income when it comes to doing in person. You just have to kind of gauge which one is best for you and where your audience is at. Now, when it comes to doing live streaming, um, you'll see service, you know, you'll use services like Facebook, YouTube, Stage It, and Twitch um, to deliver your live show to your audience. And this is something we can't recommend enough, and believe it's one of the best revenue streams available to artists. Uh, now, TJ and I are musicians and we love in-person shows. So we get it like everyone's tired of live stream because of, of COVID and all that kind of stuff. Um, but just because you go out and you start playing live shows, don't completely dismiss live streams. Um, we always say that, you know, YouTube existed before COVID did and there were plenty of people watching videos online. So your audience is there. You just need to find and connect with them. Um, now, Online shows of this additional benefits um, are that you can put them on at a fraction of the overhead cost that it costs to play live. You know, all you need is you know a place to play and the equipment, and you're good to go. Um, also, too, another benefit of playing online shows is that it allows you to reach a wider audience. You know, if you're playing a club gig, all you're going to be able to bring are people that are in that local area. Whereas a live stream show, you can literally connect with anyone from around the world. Um, and then it's also when you're putting on those kind of shows, it's easier to promote your channels uh, and get people to sign up for your mailing list. And also, as we talked about earlier, developing that direct to fan sales relationship. Whereas if you're at a live show in person, then you have to like, hey, sign up for here. or Hey, I'll contact you afterwards. Or, hey, follow me on Instagram. Whereas they can just click a link, you know, that's on the live stream site. So just keep that in mind when you're doing these types of shows. Um, and to enhance your income at your live shows, you can use this third revenue stream, which is merchandise. Now, selling merch can be a very lucrative form of income for musicians, but it doesn't come without its risk. Um, anytime that you create a physical piece of merchandise, you run the risk of not being able to sell it. So when you decide that you want to sell merch, take the time to research and understand all of the costs involved. Also, before manufacturing anything in mass, speak to your audience whenever possible and include them in the creation process. After all, your goal isn't to create a t-shirt that you want to wear. Your goal is to create a shirt that other people want to wear and that they're willing to buy. Um, now, some other ways that you can decrease your financial risk is by selling print-on-demand merch. Um, 
And in this kind of form, you just create whatever someone buys. So if they, they see that the design, they like it, they buy it, you make you know the sale, but you don't have to have 500 of them pressed and hope that you sell them. Um, the issue with this is, is that it comes with a tighter profit margin because that service um, is going to charge you more than if you're buying 100 t-shirts. So you wanna keep that in mind. Um, but again, when you do this kind of work, just make sure that you do your research, that you understand the cost involved, how much you can earn from each piece before making a commitment. Now, the fourth way that musicians can earn money um, is through patronage. Now, as long as there has been artists in the world, there have been patrons that are willing to donate their money to support art. Um, and in today's music industry, that is completely still true. Sites like Patreon, Kickstarter and GoFundMe are just a few of the platforms that musicians can use to generate money. Now, when it comes to patronage, there are two main ways to earn money um, through crowdfunding campaigns and monthly domain uh, monthly donations. Now, crowdfunding campaigns allow you to earn large amounts of money um, in a short period of time to fund projects like your next album release or tour. Um, there is quite a bit of time involved and the process is more complex than just simply asking for money. So just be aware of that. Um, but when it's done effectively, it can eliminate or at least re greatly reduce your costs, which make the possibility of earning a profit from whatever it is that you're trying to get crowdfunding for um, more probable. Um, so that's why you wanna look into that stuff. Now, on the flip side, there's monthly donations. Um, and you can do that through services like Patreon, or if you're on a site like Van Zoogle, they even have a donation um, feature on those sites as well. Now, these allow musicians to earn consistent monthly income every time they release, release new content or via subscription tiers, which is great and TJ and I absolutely love and highly recommend doing these kind of things. Um, the drawback for that kind of stuff though is it's a commitment. Uh, meaning if someone's going to pay the money for you, you know, on a monthly basis for content from you, that means that you actually have to create content on a monthly basis. Um, and that's why when we find artists that were just that are just kind of starting in the industry, we don't recommend them jumping into that right away because there's just so much work that you have to do to get yourself established and going that to get yourself up to the point where you're ready to create, you know, a song every month or um, every couple of months, you know, that could be a lot for an artist depending on how, what they have going on. So you just want to be mindful of that before you make a commitment like Patreon um, and kind of get into that. Now, the fifth revenue stream are sponsorships. Um, and sponsorships can be an effective way to earn money or reduce your expenses. Now, when it comes to earning money, a business is going to pay you to promote their brand to your audience. Um, and the great thing about this is you're going to be earning money um, while doing things that you already have to do. You know, for, an exa for example, like you might be promoting a beer company to your audience at a live show or giving a video testimonial about the, a brand during one of your social media posts. So you're already doing that. Um, and if you have a large you know, audience and then it's a, possible for you to make extra money for things again that you're already doing. Um, now, on the flip side of that, there's ways that you can reduce your expenses through sponsorships. Um, now, when it comes to reducing expenses, you can approach companies about promoting their brand in return for free or discounted samples. Um, for example, if you love a specific type of microphone, you can contact a company about promoting their mic to your audience um, in exchange for a free mic. Uh, we've had clients have actually done this or they've gotten a, a, a deep discount on a mic. Um, so any money that you can save is equal to the amount of money that you can also earn. Um, so you want to keep that in mind. Um, now, the difficulty with sponsorships is that you need to deliver an audience. Um, you can't get a sponsor if you have 10 fans. Um, and having an audience of 10,000 followers that you have zero influence over and you don't engage with also isn't going to help you get sponsors either. Um, this is one of the big reasons why if you have been watching any of our um, previous broadcasts, we, we stress building your core audience of fans. Um, because if you need their support to get things like sponsorships, um, you know, if a sponsor says, hey, how many fans you have? And you say, I have 500 people that will show up to a show um, and that engage and that buy on a regular basis, like that has value to them. Um, whereas if you get it, if you say you have 10,000 people, um, but you have a hard time reaching them or getting the show up or they don't even like your posts, then that's not valuable, you know, to a brand because the value for the brand is being able to connect with your audience and for those audience members to listen to you, your suggestions of trying out their products. Um, now last, but certainly not least is the final, um, revenue stream, which is music publishing. 
Now, music publishing and licensing allows you to get paid for the use of your music in things like TV shows, movies, commercials, and video games. Um, needless to say, um, getting your music place can lead to a huge payday, um, which is why so many artists and bands pursue publishing deals. Um, but we just believe, you know, it's our job to guys to kind of give you guys a dose of reality. Um, yes, it is 100% um, possible to have your own place in any one of these mediums, um, and you can earn money, good money from it, but it's really difficult. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, you know, because of the money that you can earn, it's why you will see coaches like myself, you know, that do what kind of do what TJ and I do, desperately trying to sell you on their service that will teach you how to get into music publishing. Um, and the reason why a lot of artists, again, want to get into this for is because it's like, it almost looks like a get rich quick thing, but there are no simple shortcuts to that kind of stuff. Um, and it's something that you really need to understand because if it's something that you really want to do, then it's a hundred percent worth pursuing it. Um, but it's a very competitive space. Um, and it's a lot of hard work. Every indie artist wants to do it. Every major artist wants to do it. And then you have every songwriter and every professional composer, um, is actively trying to get their music placed. So, you know, if you just think, Hey, I'm just going to submit my song and you know, I'm going to be on the Super Bowl. That's just not the reality of it. You have to work hard every day, um, make the connections that you need to make, um, to get your songs placed. And it's a, it's a really strong commitment. Um, again, we're not trying to discourage you from doing it. Just understand what it is that you're trying to do. Um, and if it's something that you're really passionate about, then absolutely go for it. So when it comes time for you to build these revenue streams, again, um, the way that we typically recommend doing it is to focus on one revenue stream that will be your primary form of income, such as patronage or live shows. And then look at the other revenue streams um, as ways to support or even enhance that revenue stream. Uh, meaning if you say that, hey, I love doing live shows and that's going to be the primary way you make money, then you can use merchandise and sponsorships to increase the money that you can earn from each of your live shows. Um, whereas if you have something like Patreon you know, or page patronage um, as your primary revenue stream, then you're going to use things like your music, merch, and live shows to enhance the value of the different tiers that you're going to be selling things at. Um, regardless of whatever it is that you decide to do, it takes time to develop a revenue stream um, that will be consistent and it takes interacting with your audience and building that relationship. Um, but you want to be able to develop these things over time. Um, and it's good to, you know, do a little bit from each one. Um, again, you want to develop one primary one. Um, but when all is said and done, you know, most musicians do have some sort of presence in each one of these main revenue streams in addition to other things. Um, but th those are the main ones that we want to be aware of. So when it comes time to actually do this, just be patient, watch your expenses and work, you know, work with your audience because they're the ones that are going to actually provide you with the financial support that you're looking for. Thank you guys okay. all for joining us. Hope this was helpful and informative. Yep. So thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate you guys for showing up again. Have a great day. And remember that we are always here if you need help. Thanks for watching. If you're truly serious about building a professional music career, then I recommend learning how to be successful by watching our video, How DIY Musicians Become and Stay Successful. You can find the link for it in the description below. It's filled with great information and we even give you a free gift for watching. So you really can't go wrong. Anyway, check it out today um, and please don't forget to subscribe.